Well, in keeping with the last recording, let me also uh, uh, talk about purity for a moment. I'm not a purist, not in fact. I, I for instance, in the obvious, I, I, I extol all the virtues of fruitarian diet. But I don't follow it 100%. I might if I was panicking over, say, cancer or heart disease or something. But uh, I suppose I trust that I'm, uh, if you like, eating enough fruit uh, for cancer and heart disease not to be my my problems in life. <laughs> I've got bigger problems than that at the minute that are more more pressing upon me, if you like, that I see as important from the point of view of Life eternal, loving God. So I'm not a purist. I'm out. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm vegetarian, but I'm not necessarily even vegan when I'm out. Someone's put cheese on top. Okay. It's not going to be the end of the world. I'm not living on the stuff. You know? I've got an option where I can avoid it that's reasonable or take it if there's no option well okay I mean I could sit here and say oh no I'll just have a, 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 a glass of water please you know I mean the restaurant won't be very pleased my um, friends that are with me that have come out to enjoy a meal together will sort of feel oh, that's a bit uncomfortable I mean hmm, could have something couldn't he the answer is yeah of course he could and I'll enjoy it. It's a change. I mean, I wouldn't enjoy eating a an omelette or um, steak or something, or, or where I could see there are clearly bits of ham in this. I'm a bit concerned that, you know, they may have used some fat or margarine that wasn't just vegetable origin. I, I'd rather... Well, I'd rather I was having fruit, but there you go. What I see is not a perfect world, is in fact very perfect from the point of view of impressing upon me what I value and what I don't value. My outward record is rather less important in that regard. Although it may be very important to people that look and follow my example. I'm not asking people to follow my example. I'm asking them to love their God with all their heart, soul and mind and strength. That I would ask. Because I believe and trust that's the way to go. And you can't offend God by doing that. I mean, goodness, we're children. We can't offend God anyway, but you know what I mean. You're okay with God doing that, very much so. That's why it's the first commandment, so to speak. The principle of life. That you love your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. Bless you. Thank you, Dad. I had someone go in the back of me the other day, in the car, you know. And, uh, oh, I thought, I'm going to get a new back to the car. And I got out and came round. I looked at my car. Well, actually, I looked at his, first of all, because that's where I was walking towards, so to speak, you know. And uh, it was all, all bashed in, you know, all, all the grill area and so on. The lights weren't broken, strangely enough, but a bit of damage. And I looked at mine, not a scratch on it. Ah, I realised, of course, it's the tow bar, isn't it? He got into the tow bar. He didn't get as far as my car. So, I mean, poor young chap, you know, I said, yeah, you, are you insured? He said, oh, well, only third party. I said, oh, dear. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with mine, so it's not, a, you know, it's not an issue there. But, mm, you know, I'd braked heavily because the man in front suddenly had stopped dead. I don't know why. Perhaps he misjudged whatever it was, but. And of course the chap behind, the young chap, he went in the back of me. And I had two kids in the car and they, they, weren't, uh, they weren't hurt at all. Nobody was 
nobody was hurt. And that's the important thing, isn't it? And so, well, that was it. And then I don't know how many days later, I was um, just looking along the side of the car and I thought, that doesn't look quite right. And I realised one of the panels, you know, the back panel as it comes towards the panel between that and the rear passenger door, it's not in alignment. So I pushed it and it doesn't go into alignment. Oh, it's only about, oh, it's probably <laughs> three mil millimeters you know I mean it's, 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 it's nothing is it and I take that with with cars you know I mean I've got bumps on the front of the car and not, not obvious on this one but um, you know it's it's the car's not meant to be perfect I'm not perfect I'm not pretending to be perfect I don't need to be perfect in this world you know I'm well, I suffer from varicose veins. I don't actually suffer at all now. Probably because of my diet, I believe so. Um, but they're still there. They don't look so nice. Um, my sight's not 100%. It is with glasses. It's fine, thank goodness. I can drive all right. And it's not got worse. It's stayed constant. I go back, you know, for another yet another pair of glasses after N years. And he says, your prescription hasn't changed, it's just about the same. I said, well, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I'm not, uh, it's lovely, isn't it? I'm so pleased, thank you, God. Um, but do you see, no, I'm not the perfect example of how God can make man. Although I believe we all are in a different sense. He knows what's perfect for you at the moment. Perfect from the point of view of his perfect purpose. That you have the wonderfulness of life eternity in the kingdom of God. Whatever that means. I'm not clear what that means. I might picture it as the perfect family in heaven. But I suspect his understanding of it is infinitely better than mine. <laughs> I mean, that's not unreasonable, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. He doesn't need you to be perfect in loving him. He just loves the way you appreciate him. When our kids appreciate us, we are flying. How much more, our God, if you knew the joy you give him and can give him, my goodness, you'd be flying too. Bless you. Thank you, Dad. <laughs>